everyone. This is about apologetics, and I will not apologize for the gospel. It says here in Romans 1, it's talking about the righteousness of God, it's revealed, and the wrath of God, and it is here in verse 20 we see, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. And... Uh, him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkening, darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorrupt, uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four footed beasts, and creeping things. Okay, and then it talks about how he gave them over to uncleanness and vile affections. And I'll uh, go on here. And it says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Oh, wow, debate? Debate? Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Right now. Um, addressing these things to people who do apologetics. Okay, debate. Uh, it's listed in verse 29 of Romans 1, 20, verse 29, along with all the other unrighteous things. Okay, so now we have people who like to discuss and debate an endless uh, going in circles, verbiage, you know, semantics and juxtapositions and queries and quizzing and back and forth and back and forth and endless arguing. And it also has another scripture that says the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. But they never arrive at the truth, see, because they're always going in circles and confusing people. That's what the enemy wants to do, to take your focus off the gospel and the truth in Christ and go in circles on ideas and contentions. So it, it, it's right here. Um, there's, there's no excuse for not reading the word of God. And he will render to every man according to his deeds, like it says here in um, Romans 2, 6. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, but unto them who are contentious. See, we don't think of that as a sin. That doesn't come to our mind at first when we're looking at things that the Lord doesn't like. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first 
and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with the Father in heaven. Praise his holy name. May he be praised today.